Hello, and welcome to what's bubbling at Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at some of the new things in Zim 10.2.0, and the first is Zimon. Zimon is like JSON, where it will take an object and it will turn it into a string so that you can then transfer it to a database or local storage or another language. Zimon is the same kind of thing, except it takes any object and converts it to a string. And specifically as well, it can take any Zim display object, such as a circle, triangle, button, particle emitter, etc., and turn that into a string. So it can be stored in storage as a string. When we bring it back, we can parse that and turn it back into the Zim object. But it is a general format that uh, could work in any language and be used on any object. So let's go in and take a look. We can find that in the docs of the site. So zimjs.com. We'll press into the docs here and type in zim on, enter. The first one is zim on on. So, oops. Can you see that? Zimon on, which is not Zimon. Zimon is the next one in the search. But it's good we land on this one because we have to turn Zimon on for Zimon to work. Uh, the way Zimon can record an object to be able to reproduce it requires that object to present or to have its arguments public. Whatever was passed into that, uh, that object when it was created needs to be held in a a public property. Now that's not usually required of objects, so it takes a little bit more uh, memory, but really not much at all. However, if 95% of the time you're not using Zimon, there's no point in having that happen. So we turn Zimon on if we are going to be using Zimon, and we'll hit go again, and this jumps us down to Zimon here. This is the description, the Zim object notation. It turns any prepared object into a string using Zimon stringify, and then the object. This place has examples. Why don't we go in and there and take a look? And there's the reminder again: Zimon on must be true to start. You know, when you start the app to record things properly. There is a key that says, "Hey, uh, if the if the class that the object's made from isn't in the scope." Where is it? And not only that, but um, if you want to record certain properties, which properties do you want to record? And those properties themselves will be Zimond as well to make sure that they can be turned into strings, the values of them. And then all that stuff gets put into a string and passed along. When you parse it, you don't need to worry about the key. The key is just passed in when you string a fine. In the end, what you're parsing is a JSON string, except it's got some extra Zimon data in there to let uh, Zimon know that <laughs> how things are working. Cool, huh? And there's how you can prepare objects. Uh, each object that needs to be prepared has to have a type property that matches the class name and an arguments property that holds an array of the arguments. And there's examples of how you can do that. Uh, these examples here, some of them are shown in this in this file right here. Uh, so let's go take a look at that. Just before we leave, there's a link to the GitHub, and on GitHub is Zimon, and that Zimon is arranged to be independent of Zim. So you can take that into any other language and use it much like JSON, starting with JavaScript, uh, but still can be used in PHP or Java or, or wherever, and indeed is. So let's uh, jump over to this Zimon example. And all of these things that we're seeing right here, this wall, toot, 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 the door, this particle emitter that comes from pressing on the button, all of those are made from string data. Isn't that cool? So the user might add certain objects, make some changes, all that kind of stuff. And you can just Zimon um, a collection of those things. If they're stored in an array or in an object, a collection of things, you can just zim on the whole thing, store it in local storage, come back, uh, zim on, parse it, and uh, turn it back into objects that you can use. So uh, why don't we take a look at the code? Yeah, here it is. This is the code behind that example that we just saw. 
we're running 10.2 there. It's in 10.2. So there's a description of what Zimon is doing. There we are turning the Zimon true. Here, uh, we, this is set up just as a very simple example to show you what can be done. The door, if we make a new rectangle and run this, let's open this in a browser. And then we'll reduce this down. See our F12 here. Boop. This is a, this is a rectangle object. All of these things here, and if we scroll down here, the rectangle's prototype is a, a Zim container. And if we open that up, it's got everything that a, rect a container has, which also has a prototype of. Uh, I can't see it here, but of a CreateJS container. Anyway, these things all open up with tons of stuff in them, and you can't store all of that information as a string. It, it comes back, if you try and JSON that, it comes back saying circular reference, something in there referred to itself at some point, and <laughs> it's just, uh, we don't do that. So uh, the next thing that we've recorded here is string. Let's see why that's recorded. So we've got a door, and now what we're doing is we're Zimon stringifying that door, which is our rectangle object with these parameters right here. Now we're asking for the type of Zimon, and indeed that's what had said string. So we're now creating a note as well that we did not add that to the stage. So the door is not added to the stage. We stored a variable called magic door, which is Zimon.parse this stuff that came from the door. So that's the data, that's the string that comes from the door, and we parse it, and that's what we're centering on the stage. So the door you see came from a string, and that string could be stored in local data, or local storage, or sent to the database. That was one object, a door. Here's another example of having a bunch of objects, such as a bell, which is a new circle, an effect, which is a new emitter. This emitter has in it uh, an object for a parameter and that says, hey, make it this circle. The circle has in it different colors that we can pick from that's stored in an array. So a whole mix of things, as you can see here. And we're saying start pause true. So now we zim on again, we stringify that. We uh, now will uh, Zimon parse that. So imagine that this might have been com or coming from a database or stored or whatever, all this stuff here, but Zimified. Now we parse it to turn it back into its parts. And we can say parts.bell because uh, parts is this object now. Parts.bell is the circle. Parts.bell.center. And when we tap it, we want to parts.effect dot center reg and that takes the particle emitter there because the parts dot effect is this emitter and spurts it. We could zim on styles for instance. Uh, we could probably uh, we could probably JSON this style as well. But uh, anyway we're zim on styles and we can bring back that style. Here is some uh, a tile that we created. This is doing the back the background. You can see that that's got complicated things there. It's also got properties. An alpha of three. It's been centered and it's been moved. So what we're doing is uh, when we zim on that right here. Here's us zim oning. Here's us zim oning it. We set a key that said please for any tile store the properties of alpha, x, and y. And when we zimify that, we pass in the key. Now it will not only remember your parameters, but also properties that have been set on it that match x, y, and alpha. So we then took that to a database. This is what the zimified string looks like right here, by the way. I guess that doesn't help. It's PHP or it's a string. <laughs> so uh, there it is. Uh, what do we got? Uh, Zimon records everything in the object. So this is the main object here. Uh, we have a Zimon thing. Uh, so anything that is just JSON gets recorded normally, but anything that is uh, has been Zimon gets put in a, a Zimon. 
There's a tile. Here's the arguments for the tile. The rectangle's been zim on. Here's the, the rectangle, the arguments for the rectangle. A series has been zim on. The args for that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Some more argument stuff. Here are the properties that were recorded. And here is the key. So now we jump out, and this is the key. It's saying tiles need to have that. So the key gets or zim zimond as well, so that when we parse it, uh, we know what the key is, and we can rebuild those properties. This is zimon version 1. And there's some info pointing back to this folder we're in at the moment. So in the PHP side, we're saying, hey, we're going to be sending back some data, some, some JavaScript for you. Here's the string that we want. We stored that in dollar sign remote. This is PHP. And then we uh, call the async draw tile file with that string in there like that. Again, with the single quotes in there. So just follow this format and you'll be good. Here's the async call in back in Zim. So we say Zim async. Go out and get the PHP. When it's done, call draw tile. Draw tile receives the data, and we zim on parse that data. Huh, just had a thought. We automatically parse JSON data. We should probably in in um, async automatically parse zim on data. Anyway, we'll see. But right now we've got zim on dot parse that data and add it to the stage. <laughs> what was the data? Do you remember? Oh yeah, the data was this uh, right here. We uncommented it. The data is this new tile. Okay, well, that was what we called it when we made it. So the new tile, and once we parse the data coming back, that turns it into the tile again, and we add it to the stage at position zero at the back. Isn't that cool? So that gives us the tile at the back there. This tile right here was made from a string. And that's it for for Zimon. Uh, isn't that cool? That's what's bubbling at Zim. Zimon! Ooh, and don't forget to turn Zimon on. <laughs> Ciao. I am Dr. Abstract, and if you dig this kind of stuff, come on in to zimjs.com slash slack and uh, chat with us. It's free and fun and we're here. We'd love you to start building with Zim or um, talk to us about what you've been making. Ciao.